All right, we're going to take a look at The uh, Last of Us Part 2. Uh, this next video, e episode 2, Inside the Gameplay. Yeah, all right. Let me put my, my skull crushers on. Let's take a listen to this guy. All right, Neil. Narrate this man for us. Let's see what the gameplay is like. Oh, yeah. I like blood and gore and tense yeah. violence. Under here. What the gameplay needs to do is immerse you in the world. Yeah, I give agree. Give you as many interesting actions to survive in this world and overcome obstacles. And obstacles could be infected, it could be other people, it could yep. just be the environment, it could be rushing water, anything that could happen in this post-apocalyptic world. Are you clean? Yeah. Obstacles but make more than you anything, strong. I need to put you in Ellie's shoes. That you're experiencing what Ellie's experiencing, making you feel what she feels. Because yep. the more we do that, the more the emotional beats of the story work for us, and the more they work for us in this very unique way that only works in video games. The gameplay philosophy of The Last of Us Part Two is putting you in the shoes of Ellie and everything that that means. It means giving you a threat constantly, as this world has. It means giving you the hard choices. Because this game takes place in such a hostile universe and our characters are pushed to do really difficult things, we want to put you in alignment with those choices. We want you to understand how hard certain decisions were for these characters, because they're hard for you. Yeah. But that's... I would say the reality the overarching of the situation. philosophy of how we approached designing the game mechanically is how can we take things to the next next level. Yeah, I like that, yeah. Everything kind of comes out of the story. And how do we do it through systems? So one is you have that to feel the pressure too. of survival. Mm -hmm. Survive by the skin of my teeth. How do I use all these, all the scrap around me? Any kind of bullet, any kind of rag, any kind of bottle of alcohol. How do we give you that sense of being a survivor in this world? <laughs> Ellie is very small compared to Joel and more nimble. How do we make you feel like you're not the strongest person in the room, but you still should be able to rise to the challenge and survive, you know, a fight with a bunch of people that are all bigger than you? So therefore, it meant creating a character and systems and mechanics that allow you to be much more nimble. Like Dark Souls. And that's Souls. where we added um, a jump button. <laughs> in the first game, we had a clamor button. A not jump really button? Jumping. And here, Ellie can jump. The combat scenarios are much more vertical, where Ellie can use elevation to her advantage. Prone is a huge, huge one. Of prone, course. obviously, it means to lay flat on the ground. Uh, something so Call simple. Again, something that in real life you'd be able to do. Letting the player have access to all their weapons, all the items, crafting, everything, while in that position. And it just creates so many more emergent uh, things in gameplay. Now that we have this other state that the player could be in, which are very low to the ground, how else can we use this other than just hiding in vegetation? We're like, well, there's a lot of man-made things or... Yes. Different You can climb under cars. Oh. ...that allow just enough space for you to crawl under, which means that now, as enemies are looking for you, you can crawl under things and hide. Yes. And it's just one more way to assess your environment and use it to Ellie's advantage. Now, because you can hide under things, we gave the enemies, we made them smarter and gave them the ability to look under things. So ah. while you might hide somewhere and be safe for a while, eventually they're going to start looking under stuff. And if you're hiding under a truck and they spot you, they're going to yank you out and then try to kill you. Oh, I, I, I had that happen to me one time. Somebody slammed my head against the back of concrete. Dodging Not is fun. a big one because now with Dodge, Anytime you're in a you're in a a scuffle, you have a chance to get away. You have a chance to counterattack. It lets escape be an option as well. Sometimes you just gotta run. 
And that is another part of this world, which is sometimes the threat is so overpowering that you just have to get away. Yeah. When you... I agree. I agree with that. Yes. Man. The... Because uh, in a lot of these games, I would say, uh, at least for me, and I'm sure this is for a lot of people, I'm going to kill everybody. I'm going to kill everybody. I don't care what... If we on the map, I ain't running. I'm getting everyone. But in real life scenario, uh-uh. Mm -mm. Like Call of Duty, you're going to take uh, five or six shots, seven or eight shots, and, and then, you know, get your health back? No, 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 no. In real life scenario, right, you get shot one time with, 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 a, with a 22 in the leg, and I'm done. It's over with. You got me. You got me. Right? But, uh... Yeah, that's one thing that I didn't like about a lot of these games, like uh, uh, Dark Souls and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, I love some Dark Souls. Yes, I do. Bloodborne, Dark Souls, right? Uh, Sekiro, or... Uh, I haven't played the Demon Souls as of yet. I just found out about that game a, 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 a week or two ago. But there ain't no jump. Well, I mean, there's a jump to an extent, right? But uh, not, in, not in any real sense. There, there's no jump. You know, there's no prone or crawling. Or, it's not really a hiding type game, which, of course, you know... You got a bunch of armor on and stuff like that, so you know it's not really one of those. And, and, and it's fine, right? But uh, uh, it's like with Grand Theft Auto, right? If you can go inside of every single building and go into every single floor, right? And then you could kick doors in, and every single uh, room was different with different people, right? That'd be uh, an awesome game, awesome game. Right, but at the same time, it's like most people, you know, aren't gonna go through every single hotel and see what's going on in every single floor, or every single door. But at the same time, it's like if it's uh, if it's that immersive, brother, that's a game. Holy crap, that's a game. Uh, everyone would own that game, you know, because uh, I mean, literally, you could do anything. It's, it would be literally, uh, what's the Rick and Morty, uh, uh, where, where they go into. Uh, uh, di a different reality and Rick's running around with no uh, 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 social security number. I can't remember the name, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Boy, that that's a game. Boy, that would be awesome, right? And, uh, you know, the closer they can get to that, boy, the better. Because in real life scenarios, pfft, boy, it ain't gonna be like that. Like, you, you see all these movies and stuff like that where they, you know, they hide behind the couch, behind the bar or whatever. If you hide behind a couch or a bar or, a, you know, a wall, that don't mean nothing for no type of gun whatsoever. Your front door, any of your front doors, unless it's a solid wood, you know, inch and a half piece, right? Which might stop a handgun bullet and maybe a 22. Everything else is going directly through it. Now, other than that, Boy, there ain't nothing in your house you can hide behind, right? Uh, maybe some brick, uh, uh, any sort of, um, if there's like multiple layers of wood, if it has to go through several walls, and I think even with a handgun, right, uh, it's going to go through, I would say, at least three to four uh, uh, layers of drywall and, you know, uh, the exterior siding. And if you start talking about, you know, rifle bullets, nothing, nothing is stopping that, brother except for something specifically designed to stop a rifle bullet, right? Uh, so, you know, in a lot of these movies and games, it, they show people hiding behind couches, behind bars. In, in, a, in a real life scenario, none of that is going to help you. None of that. The only way to get away from a, that kind of thing is distance. Distance. And boy, you better hope God they ain't got a good gun or a good shot, because man, it, it it that scenario is not realistic at all there's a movie called shot us and basically uh, it, uh towards the end of the movie right it, they end up hiding behind this couch and boy they just they go into town with all sorts of stuff right uh uh they they hitting they're, they're hitting them up with handguns and uh or rifles and uh uh uh, submachine guns and stuff like that shotguns and, and, and you know it's like the the couch is stopping this god that must have been the hardest couch on the planet why they own that couch that got to be the most uncomfortable couch on the planet you know but it, it, that ain't real brother that ain't real i'm here to tell you especially with the rifle bullet Ooh, law law have your mercy uh that rifle bullet's going through everything like if i'm sitting here 
uh, in my house, right, and uh, I hear people come through the front door or something, I could aim through that door, which would go through that wall, which would go through the next wall, which would go through the next wall, and I would still hit that dude, right? And it still might go through him. It, it ain't nothing to play with, right? So, yeah, yeah. Realism. Realism. Life is... It's a, it's a dirty one. <laughs> Let's finish this. Let's finish it. Come on. Tell, tell us what you got, Drugman. Who are partially hidden, or you're like you're in grass, that means people from afar can't see you, but people from closer can kind of see you. Yeah, yeah. They will eventually acquire you. You're not completely hidden when you're in grass. Yeah. She went into the grass. Watch yourself. And it makes you as a player become much more aware of your surroundings. Jump, prone, dodge, you know, all these things feed into both exploration and uh, combat because it lets us expand the space. If the size of spaces can be bigger, the intricacy of spaces can be more complex, and it still works exactly as you would expect. So when it came to our level design, we really wanted to challenge ourselves to make a world that really felt like a real space as much as we possibly could and didn't feel like a series of combat encounters and exploration spaces and then combat encounters that felt like a, a hall of horrors or something, um, but something that really felt like a space that you could explore that seemed like a legitimate uh, urban environment. And that pushed us to make our level design uh, even more open than it was in the first game, which for us at the time was uh, was pretty open. Not in this that game, open. we've gone so far in making the level design open uh, that there are actually entire story moments, entire combat encounters, like full scripted sequences that you may completely miss. And there are things that we feel like, even though the portion of our player base may never see these things, uh, the fact that when you do encounter them, you feel like you discovered them, it lends them this charm and this magic that I think is unique to games that, you know, this, this happened to me because of what I did and what, the place I explored to. Crafting is very much about a payoff to exploration, meaning that when you enter new spaces, you want to look around for supplies. You want to open drawers and cabinets um, and look for different things that will allow you to craft. And yeah, uh, that's the way it would be too. In a real life scenario, uh, everything would be gone. You would have to search. Everything would be hidden. Anything that's worth anything would always be hidden. So, and, you know, you see some games where, you know, it's supposed to be this sort of scenario, but yet there's windows that are still intact and relatively clean. And Uh-uh. If you've ever been, man, if you've ever been to a house that's been vacant for pff, a month, okay, it, it, it's a wreck in there. It's a wreck. Stankin', just musty and just... Dusty and I mean dusty as dirty roaches. You know that's after like a month. You know if this is twenty five years, uh, boy, uh, a lot of these houses would be absolutely just uh, uh, destroyed. Uh, the uh, the moment one window breaks, boy, uh, the humidity's gonna get in there, and then uh, it's gonna go to town. It's gonna go to town. Let's finish this. Let's finish it. I'm sorry. Let's do it. Either items that can help you heal, items that can help you attack multiple enemies at once, such as the Molotov um, or the landmine that Ellie can craft. Items that can help augment your weapons, like a silencer for her pistol, um, or craft new kinds of ammo. It also gives us mm -hmm. tons of interesting gameplay choices and overlaps that you can do in any moment and in, in on the fly. We try to be a game that wants you to make a lot of different decisions in combat as possible. And the way that we've expanded the recipe roster and all of the recipes and how they interact with each other is carefully chosen for the different ingredients and making sure that you always have these interesting decisions to make. We put a much stronger emphasis on the importance of the choices you make in the long term for your character. Yeah. Be useful through the weapon upgrade system, through the player upgrade system. A lot of good information there are in those magazines. Resources in a single playthrough to fully upgrade your character. The choices that you make, you're going to have to live with, and we wanted to make sure that all of the choices that you made had a really noticeable and tangible effect on the way yeah. that you play. Yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of games where it's like, 
some of the things that you get or the some of the things that you do or uh, upgrades that you get they don't mean anything you know so now they say this but of course when we get the game we'll see you feel a greater kinship with Ellie because you are living with decisions that you've already made. Like you, you are continuing this through line of her journey through this world. Uh, and the moment to moment gameplay is influenced by that in a way that we haven't before. The realization that your choices have these long term consequences is very much like the nature of the, the narrative of the game. What's her friend doing? Uh, I'm happy that Nothing? the are supporting that. <laughs> I ain't seen her friend do nothing. I'm here to tell you, it's it's like they tell you in the military, boy, you only as good as the man next to you. And her boy, her partner, I ain't seen her do nothing. But yeah, that's the end of the third episode. Uh, like, subscribe, comment down below. What did you think, right? You think that uh, harder games suck? You think easy games are suck I don't know let me know you think this game's gonna be hard I don't know last game wasn't all that hard I mean uh, I pretty much tried to save up everything and get through each scenario without using any health packs and stuff like that and then it turned out dang the end of the game is already right here like geez you know it was just too easy right again I guess I could have went on hard mode but after you played the game one time what, what is hard mode going to do? Add a couple more enemies? Now, is that worth it? In some games, yeah, but, you know, at least for me, on the first one, it was just like, no, no I think I got it. But, yeah, uh, leave some comments down below. Uh, tell me how much y you hate me because my opinion is that uh, the first one wasn't all that good. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you will. Let me know.